Here we go, here we go once more into the deep. This is take two on this. Of course, I tried to start this and the batteries didn't work. Uh, batteries went dead and I didn't get very far, so that's good. All right, so this is a Technics SU V76 new class A super base. I don't know what the hell. Um, it's pretty clean. Not too bad. I cleaned it up in here. There wasn't too much in this. This was from one of those lots that I got. I'm pretty happy with most of the stuff that I got out of there. Uh, except for the CD players. Those are going to some, need some work if I'm going to get them at all. But anyway, I got this thing going and this is a little bit of a problem. Um, first problem is, is that I've lost the cap to the switch because I didn't put it in the right spot. But oh, that's not the big problem because I'm sure it'll kind of turn itself up because those things... <laughs> problem is... It's not the switch, the switch cap, because I have that somewhere around here. Oh cool, I put it exactly where it was supposed to be. Anyway, um, here's what the problem is, is that the switch is broken. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's plug it in. And you can see, if I turn the switch on, oh, it came on. And if I had this hooked up to speakers, you could hear it. It, 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 it just did the click, the amp click, all the lights come on. Um, this actually works if you turned on the, if you had, um, speakers hooked up, you'd hear it, but now watch, now if I let this go, I'm not supposed to hold, my, hold on here, click, oh, everything goes off, even though that's still technically on, and now there's the click off. So what's going on is, this switch is busted. So I went in here, and I pulled this out, and I was like, okay, well, I guess the switch is busted, that's not that big of a deal, but... I want to make sure two things. I want to make sure that it really was just the switch. Uh, the first thing I did is I used some deoxid in there and tried to get it to work. And it actually kind of did for a second. So there's just, just something physically broken in the switch. Um, that just isn't, you know, I don't know, whatever. But I want to make sure that it was actually the switch. Now, I went digging into my switch piles and I found this guy. Mm, there he is. And sorry, everything's upside down and backwards for me. Uh, so... This is the only switch that I had that is rated for 120 volts because uh, this is right into the main. So what I wanted to do to see if it was going to be the right thing or not. Oh, just down. Oh, all right, so if this is the back of the switch, it's very simple. Dun, dun, dun. And so if it really is the switch, if I bridge that, it should turn that turn on. And so if I bridge it with the switch, theoretically, this thing will turn on. So, what I did was I actually use alligator clips. Because this is such a big thing, there's a big post there. There's such a big post there, and there's so much salt. <gasps> Ow! Ah. Yeah. Well, don't touch the alligator clips because it's mains power. <sighs> anyway, and you can see the lights dim, and you can see on here where you can't see it, but everything came out and everything stayed on, so that's good. Perfect. So, turn that off. That's mains power. That's crazy. Let's unplug that because we don't want to deal with that anymore. Um, so, what are we going to do? This switch doesn't look like this, and I don't want to take this out and try to reach something in here, and I don't want to cut anything or drill holes in the plastic. This is still. Eventually, I can look this up and get this part and fix this switch properly, but this is just a temporary fix and just to say two things. One, you know, well, what happens if I can't get the part, you know? I'm starting to wonder about some of these things that we've got issues with going on worldwide. Um, and they're going to be affecting our supply chains. But let's neither here nor there. So, anyway, I'll put the switch back in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the switch back in and I'm going to hang, take this, and there's a little that, that hole out here. I'm going to stick it out the back. Because I don't want, like I said, I don't want to, I don't want to mutilate this because eventually I want to put it back to the factory, but I want to go through the exercise of, hey, well, what happens if you can't? What, what have you got to do to, to, to fix it? You know, what if, what, if, what if eventually as we go down the road, spare parts are going to get hard to find and you know, we're going to be cannibalizing other things and we're going to be pulling things apart and doing things that we... So, might as well take some getting used to that, you know, because we want these things to last and lasting means more than just until they break the first time because the parts are going to fail and this is what's going to happen. So, what I decided to do here, let me zoom back out a little bit, see, see what's going on. I have 
some heat shrink that I put on here, and then this is going to go, and I've already done this, but it fits in just barely with that heat tape, that shrink tape in there. And then I'll take that, and then I'll tape that down or something like that. Now I'll take this, I'll bring it down here, and I'm going to run this wire up and add them. And so I'm going to strip this. Bought a new wire stripper today. It's really nice, but this is my old handy dandy heavy duty one. And I have really had good luck lately with not these. Oh, schnookums. Where is my parts? Ah, here they are. These guys. A little sealy plastic, a little shrink wrap, and a little solder in there. Really nice. Now, what I found that I like to do though is tin the tips anyway on what's going in there just because um, I find it's just a little bit better. So, just get a little bit extra in there and don't rely completely on that um, blob that's in in that that joint whatever they, those couplers uh, what the hell language <laughs> All right, a little tin on there there's nothing about tin on this I was watching the strange parts guy and if you don't know the strange parts channel you should watch it uh, he's a guy in China who is, runs around the factories and build things and stuff with, I don't know, he's just, it's interesting to see what's going on over in China uh, with their factories. He went to a f factory mall store or something, I don't know, he was just in like an industrial mall, like a mall for industrial parts. It's crazy. Anyway. Super hot, come on guy. Alright, these stupid shrink wrap things are super annoying. You gotta use the size bigger because of the. just to make sure. And I don't like ever using things that are too big. Well, one thing I should warn you about when you do this now, I'm about to put some heat shrink on this. I'm gonna do it off to the side. <sighs> Better watch your heat shrink when you're doing this because you'll sh heat shrink your heat shrink while you're shrinking your you'll shrink the shrink wrap while you're trying to do this and then you won't be able to do that. Now what you want to do is you want to get it so that your your pla your your wire plastic is inside the blue line and that the wire the bare wire is crisscrossing at the solder joint and then. We blast it with hot, hot, hot air. Let me tell you, this Wagner heat gun saved my butt. I had a problem up on my roof, and I had to get up there the other day and melt ice and melt ice off my metal roof so I could put some patching on there. And this thing did an amazing job doing exactly what it's doing now. This thing gets so hot. It's like to get that little piece of metal in there to melt, the solder to melt, it's like you're just liquefying the the metal in the, or the plastic and it's clear so it's hard to tell that you're not and it is a shrink wrap anyway and that, that blue dye, that dye, expanding dye is actually nice because it lets you see, hey you got this that's a nice, nice seal okay so now we're going to let that go for just a second because it's super hot. We're gonna lay it down in here next to this other wire, and I don't want to. I don't want any hassles. I don't want any trouble, man. Uh, in the meantime, what we'll do is we'll just strip this. I should have done that in the first place, because now well, we only have just a tiny little piece of visible. We're not gonna take a lot of wire off of this, because you know we're kind of doing a hack job over here. 
We want as much insulation as we can. I'll melt that fucker right in. Language! Alright, so you know that's already feeling okay. That's not too bad. It's stiffening up, it's tight, it's not it's not loose or anything, and you can definitely tell that the solar is melted and that's got a good that's a good connection. So I'm pretty happy about that. Well, that'll go in there like so. Oh now if you really want to get fancy, you can just take one of these and you can really heat shrink the whole thing. Get that in here. I don't really normally get all heat shrinky. Come on. Little bump sticking out there. Just have to turn them in. Come on. These things. You know. When a piece of plastic doesn't want to move, the first thing you want, the first instinct is to heat it up so it'll stretch, and that's that's the last thing you want to do with one of these. So, this is kind of silly. Uh oh, people are home. They're gonna come barging in here. Um, they're gonna say something. They're gonna say, "Hi, we're back from dinner." So I went to the store today, bought some masks. Good to have around anyway, right? And if they're going to be sold out, I don't want to be stuck without them. So I got some. All right, now that. Let's shrink that up there. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. I'm not a big fan of shrink wrap, but we're in here next to this transformer. Let's shrink it up. Call the deck. Alright, looking good. Oh, that's actually really loose right now, but. Tin this up over here. Oh, and in the meantime, I'm just gonna put some hot snot on that on the back, so I better plug that in. Uh, that always takes a minute to heat up. So. I'd love to be able to play some music, but of course I can't because YouTube sucks. But I'd love to be able to. But I won't. I just bought a whole box of tapes, a couple hundred, from a guy. Oh, uh, we'll be going through them. Where's my flux brush? Where's my flux brush? I swear to God, I can't ever find anything, even though nothing is ever more than four feet away from me. There she goes. This cheap soldering iron. I came with all these stupid orange tools, these pokey grabber things. I kind of laughed at them, but they've come in really, really handy. 
Let's actually do that. Ooh, that's actually pretty good. Oh, not so good. connected go yeah. oh, that's looking pretty good Looking pretty good. <sighs> I can down in there. That's actually not a bad job. And let's see if it works. <sighs> And it'll go click. These capacitors are starting to get a little bulgy, but everything seems to work. So I'm just going to hot snot that down. I'm going to call this a very successful, successful repair in which we did not break the device. We didn't make any holes or scars or do anything that we can't undo. A little hot snot never hurt anybody. Now, one thing I want to say is that I think it's important that I that you read what the switch is because I didn't have any switches that were ready for high voltage. Everything else I had for switches was low voltage stuff, and because I'm usually using low voltage stuff, obviously, and so it was a little bit like a oops that there was high voltage stuff. And uh, <clears throat> that I had a switch, or you know, so don't mess around with that if you don't have the right stuff. Also, that that was rated for six amps. That switch is rated for six amps, and this is a four and a half amp system. So okay, we're good, right? Right, because it's really four and a half max anyway. So um, another one saved. These late '90s stereos sound great. 
they work great um, and there's no reason to not have them and use them we're going to keep up keep this up and keep this tradition alive now I was thinking about it I was like I guess with cars people keep the classic cars and don't like the, the new stuff and find find some awesome performance or whatever in the in cars but for the most part I mean we we definitely churn our technology over there's nobody like using your grandmother's <clears throat> vacuum cleaner because it just worked better than it does now uh, for the most part things work better now but I think what we have is a glut of there's so much out there especially with like stereo equipment and stuff that like like back in the day like you're gonna pay a lot of money for it anyway so you might as well spend it on the good stuff and not get something cheap and crappy because you you know you're gonna spend three hundred dollars on a piece of shit or five hundred dollars on something really nice and you might as well you know <laughs> you're going whole hog you might as well go in but nowadays you know you can get a piece of sh you know, something cheap for for 20 bucks where you know you can start really spending money on the expensive stuff so it's like mm, i don't know maybe that cheap stuff's okay and the floor has come up in a lot of crap cheap electronics too but there's still a lot of life in these guys um so we're gonna keep doing this we're gonna keep repairing them there's another one ready to go uh we put new feet on them we we uh, i just wrecked it no we put new feet on them we put the new switch in uh, and we clean them all up and clean all the nicotine off and clean all this stuff up and it should be good to go and I'm feeling good about this unit now that's a, that's a pretty fairly professional looking repair job without putting anything in there this is an, actually a nice waterproof switch it's supposed to go you know, I could have drilled a little hole I was hoping that it could fit in here I could have drilled this one of these into a little expansion but I didn't want to get into it I, and I could have mounted that on the inside and then you know had this hole come out far enough you know I'd have to drill a pretty pretty big hole between the two and then I could seal that up pretty good with that rubber gasket and whatnot as a waterproof guy it's for boats but I am happy with the way it came out thanks for watching this repair uh, again we're out here just reminding people that you can fix things you can keep the old stuff going along because it's still awesome and nobody's going to say booty about it and it's actually a really great project and great little things to learn about you know what you're doing these are not difficult but you know that switch could 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 have stymied someone that could have knocked it out i believe actually what they <laughs> it, it, not hindsight 2020 of course i didn't realize what i was doing at the time but i'm pretty sure that the guy that had it before me just had the, a piece of tape like holding it down holding it in but i don't want to get rid of this stuff i don't want to we want to keep it going. It's it's uh it's worth it. It was worth the 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 little investment of time to figure that out and do it. And now I feel really good about it. I got a story and I got a I got one with a switch that works. All right. Until next time. That's uh that's it for the uh, from the from the home office of the little lab. Oh, by the way, haha. Got one of these for Christmas. Alex did, and uh, DC nine volt. It was a nine volt battery or 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 nine volt uh, whatever, and it didn't work very well at all so I said you know what I bet you I can put this in a 12 volt and it'll it'll do what I want it to do and uh, well yeah she stands right up and says hello she did not do that at nine volts. Here's her, here's at nine volts. This is what I this is this is what you did at nine volts. Actually, it's working a lot better at this nine volts than uh, the nine volt battery. I love my bench power supply. But anyway, oh yeah, it does that. But if I put them in the twelve volt. He's having a good time. That's enough for tonight. Goodbye.